Welcome to the recording around the UK MSSNA uh, competency document. I have with me the key members of uh, the original, uh, the original competency document, and those that have been involved in bringing it to fruition now. So, in advance of its launch, um, we have this discussion, um, and just wanted to bring you some key points and and information around this. So, my name is Ruth Stross. I'm the uh, Head of Nursing with Neurology Academy. Uh, I'm also an MS nurse specialist by background. So let me hand over to Megan. Thank you, Ruth. Um, hello, I'm Megan Roberts. I'm an independent MS nurse uh, consultant. I was the Head of Health Professionals Programme at the MS Trust till I retired a, a couple of years ago. Thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this. It's been hard work, but fantastic to be part of uh, putting this, this document together. And it, it's great to have this opportunity to, to share with everybody just how significant it is. So, Mavis. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you to um, the MS Academy and to Ruth for this invitation to um, talk about the MS nurse competency. So I'm the current co-chair of UK MS CNA and also the lead nurse in Southampton as an MS nurse. So um, this project is sort of deep in our hearts as MS nurses. So we're just so pleased that it's um, finally here. So I'll pass you to Carol. Thank you, Mavis. I'm Carol Turner, MS nurse based in um, North Devon District Hospital, which is part of the new and emerging Royal, um, Royal Devon University Healthcare. Um, and it's been great to be involved in the, de the revisiting and the redevelopment of the MS nurse competencies and shining the light um, and the focus upon the value of MS specialist nursing. Thank you, Carol. Um, I guess before we launch into kind of a little bit more detail around the existing competencies, it'd be really good to look at the kind of backgrounds and the importance um, of kind of where they came from. I have the original competencies be behind me, having been an MS nurse for a while, but I wondered, Thank Megan, whether... You whether <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I, I just wondered, Megan, whether you could go through, you know, a little bit around where it came from and, and kind of the journey to now, I guess. I think as, as one of the oldest members here, I'm probably <laughs> fitted for that. Um, yes, of course. I think it was, so MS nursing really only became a, a recognised specialty in sort of the, the early to mid 90s. Um, it was only sort of in 1996 when I first became an MS nurse, as Peter Fearon was licensed. And it, it was at that point that we started to become a horse rather than the odd individual around the country. Um, and that we very clearly were having to fight for our roles and demonstrate the value of our roles. And, and we were all sort of working towards that, as we do now, but but it was even more so then. And it was the original competencies were published in, I think, 2008. And Vicky Matthews, who's now retired, um, absolutely led on that and, and sort of brought those together. And they were fantastic. They really made a big difference at the time. A huge, big file, but really important, full of all the really... Um, key aspects of the nurse's role and it really helped us then to, to sort of further the, the the definition of what an MS nurse was and is and does. Um, and I think what happened then was that of course MS nursing evolves, treatment evolved um, and sort of, sort of a decade later we were really finding that the competencies that Vicky had put together, um, a lot of them were just not relevant anymore just because treatment had moved on. Um, and the care that MS nurses were, were expected to give had changed. Um, and I think at that point, there were various conversations going on. Um, I know Carol and Mavis, I think you, you were having um, lots of discussions about the need for an updated competency document. The MS Trust, we were doing the same sort of, of thing. So I think various groups of us then started to work on, on putting together this document. Um, and of course, we then had COVID, um, which sort of slowed things up rather um but and that, that's why it's taken us a, a few years since 2018 but i don't know maybe whether the carol whether you want to say a bit more on on how things have evolved since then carol do you want to go first yeah uh, just to say that i'm sure mavis had a lot of people um talking to her or suggesting about an updating of the competencies and probably something the uk mss and they were already thinking about um, but I think it was a I can't really remember Megan was it 2018 it seems such a long time ago now 2019 um, um, 
uh, when I spoke to you first, I think it was possibly at conference, um, because I was involved with the Southwest um, Peninsula MS Network, and we were looking at workforce and education, and um, looking at the national picture, and with a lot of um, nurses, more than 50% in the Southwest would you, could retire within the next five years. So we wanted to look at how that would in, in impact and looking at the the loss of expertise in the region so we wanted some sort of forward movement and involvement with updating the competencies because um they would assist workforce education and future proof services for us so we were really keen to get involved so um we got involved um in our organization so We've had conversations, um, you know, like with individual people in the past sort of few years about the competencies and just updating it, um, making it relevant to current practice uh, as, you know, the role of the MS nurses evolved so much throughout the years. Um, so the conversation started quite early on, perhaps just before the pandemic. And like Megan said, the pandemic happened, so it really slowed things down. Um, but as an organization, you know, the UK MS Nursing Association, we're quite keen to lead on this because it is about um, our competency as MS nurses to um, provide evidence of our worth as well and for the succession planning, you know, of um, future MS nurses. Yeah, that's quite interesting, isn't it, Mavis, around the succession planning? I think historically people thought there, there is obviously nurses retiring, but but I, across the nursing population, there is that the the group that are leaving are the under 45. So I guess something like this is really supportive of nurses actually coming into new roles and staying in roles. So there's a reason why they're leaving. And I guess it's looking at what else is out there. What would you say were the, um, the aims of the, the competency document? What were the original kind of ideas behind? So perhaps if we have to narrow it down is to equip existing and new nurses coming into the role um, in terms of what are their core competencies to be able to do the job well and safely for our patients. So perhaps that is the main aim. And then I think throughout the year, especially the last five, 10 years, nurses are fighting for their for their roles, you know, for, for education. And I think specialist nurses in general, you know, it's it's very different from ward nursing. And we now have MS nurses coming into the role, coming from the wards, coming from from A and E, from uh, from intensive care, with with without prior knowledge about multiple sclerosis. So we needed a document, like a competency document, to help guide them. Um, and I know we'll go through what you know, the, the Brenner method um, of competencies, but um, it, it's about trying to encourage nurses to come in into the role who might not think of specialist nursing, you know, um, in multiple sclerosis. And also working through the level of competencies, you know, from novice to expert, um, we were quite keen not to put banding on the document because there's a, a, a huge variation of banding across the UK. Carol, you you've sort of mentioned before around this being a you know a great um, tool for career development. Yes, um, and feeding on really from what Mavis said that you know um, anyone considering a career in MS nursing, um, which was really where I was coming from at the time with the updating of the competencies, was that they would provide an individual with an insight into the role, and the fact that there are competencies is a great um, thing for a, a new nurse. Um, also, um, the expectation and career development opportunities that are available within a role. Again, highlighting the importance of the MS specialist role. Yeah, absolutely. And do you feel that it's important that this is, will this be available for the wider um, group or, or is it specifically for MS nurses? I believe that this competency document can be used by anyone working in the field of MS. Um, it, it, it is a nurse specific competency document, but anyone can use it as, as, a, as a foundation um, um, being in the role of, you know, looking after uh, people with MS. So I don't know if Megan wants to add to that. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree, Mavis. I think that um, it'll be, you know, it, it's key, for, obviously, for all MS nurses at all levels. But and, and I think also nurses work, working on the wards who perhaps may just come across the occasional patient with MS. Um, I think it can be really helpful with them. But also particularly for people like district nurses, perhaps practice nurses, um, nurses working in care homes, um, et cetera, or residential homes, who perhaps have people with MS in their remit, um, but aren't specialists and don't know a great deal perhaps about multiple sclerosis. But this might at least help them to, to flag up areas where they feel they need more training and point them in the direction of different resources or, or different people who can help them to access that training and, and get the knowledge they need to provide the care for their patients, even if it's only sort of you know, specific area of care that they're looking at. Um, so, no, I think it would be useful to all sorts of people. And I guess one of the questions that will come up alongside what you've all been saying is, is this just for new nurses into post, or would you say this would be really helpful for nurses who have already been in post for a few years? I, I definitely. I mean, we're, you know, I always say, you know, learning and constant education is for everyone you know I think once we say if, if we say to ourselves so I've, I know everything you know that's kind of the time to stop what we're doing but it's you know the expert level of um, the competency document I think that is also a good tool for nurses to use around you know um, kind of fighting you know I think that's the right word to use these days of fighting for their role for their branding that actually I'm an expert in this field, you know, and this should align to, to, to my current role in banding. So, you know, we're all working towards something um, and this is just a guide. Um, and I would imagine, you know, in, in three years time, there will be another iteration of the competency document. So we're always learning from it. Yeah. Yeah, I did have, I've obviously had to look through the competencies and it, and it does talk through the sort of aims of the competencies is to prioritise people, practice effectively, preserve safety, promote professionalism and trust. I mean, I don't know if you want to go into that in more detail. You did talk about aligning with, um, you know, with, with the uh, NMC code of practice uh, and other documents. I don't know if anyone wants to comment on this. So we we were quite keen to align the competency document with the NMC code of practice. So we are all um, in the UK, we are all under the NMC, so all four nations. So we're quite um, keen to have that in the beginning. So all the competencies are aligning to that and also um, KSF. Um, and it's been accredited by the RCN. So it aligns with those different things. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we've talked a little bit around the background um, of you know where the kind of the journey to now what well, Mavis um, and, and Carol when you did you know take this up and start putting together what was that what was that like who was involved and <laughs> Carol do you want to go first <laughs> <laughs> well I I really had the conversation with Mavis but it was Mavis as her role within the UK at MSSNA committee that ran with it really and was a great organizer and still is so I think you're probably um, better prepared to answer this question, Mavis. <laughs> um, so as we mentioned earlier, the, the pandemic happened in, in between. So the, the, the process, the conversation started, you know, between Megan, Carol and the, and the organization. And essentially we formed the core people um, to be involved in the creation of the competency. And then after that, we have divided, so to speak, um, what core parts of the competencies um, that we would write up. So this document has been written up by the committee members and the core group um, that we have created, the steering committee, so to speak, um, to make sure that all, again, the four nations um, have contributed to the, um, the document. And that process took a while. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of going back and forth, you know, um, and, you know, there's a lot of emails, um, you know, as, as you would recall, <laughs> Carol, um, chasing people, you know, the committee members, the core group, you know, during the pandemic, I don't think people appreciated, appreciate this, that, you know, nurses, you know, MS nurses were redeployed, you know, and um, most of the nurses, there was no service for, for some um, organizations. So, you know, this project unfortunately had to take a back seat, um, you know, to, to maintain safety of, you know, um, 
patients that we're looking after. Um, so we paused there, I think, for a while. Um, and then, you know, during the recovery process, it, it's, it's when we started, okay, what are we, how are we doing? Can we just restart this again? Um, and we were fortunate enough to um, be granted funding um, to have um, a medical writer help us, um, which was a huge um, contribution to the document, actually, because I think at the end of the day, we are nurses, you know, we know what we're doing, you know, we're confident in our, our role, but actually putting things together, that's something that we need a, li a little bit of help with. Um, so we were fortunate enough to secure funding for a medical writer to um, put things together. And then actually after that's happened, the process was, I wouldn't say quick, um, but it, it moved things along quite quickly. Um, and then we applied um, for accreditation um, from the RCN. And again, fortunate enough, you know, with minor revisions, I have to say, um, so really minor revisions um, on the documents. So after one revision, we resubmitted and it was accredited after that. And um, I thought that I could just say, oh, wonderful, the competency is done, but actually the hard work now <laughs> starts with launching, <laughs> making sure everyone is aware. I thought I was just, oh, amazing. But um, yes, yeah, so we are now in the pr process of, launching the document, making sure everyone is aware of it and um, getting um, organizations like, you know, the MS Academy, MS Trust, MS Society to endorse the document. Um, and then after that, we'll get it printed and disseminated to to everyone who wants to um, have access to it. Thanks, Mavis. Uh, whistle, I... whistle stop. <laughs> whistle stop. No, that, that was fantastic. Thank you. And I guess, I guess you, you lead beautifully into the kind of, you know, so if we were to go to approach um, MS nurses with this and to tell them what the benefit would be, uh, um, Megan, you, I know you've sort of mentioned a, a few things. How can how can nurses use these competencies within their role, and and also how would that benefit? How can who else is is important in that? I guess looking at the sort of managers, non nurses, nursing managers. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. um, I think for the the MS nurse, somebody who's who's already in role, I think it's it's really useful document i think you know when you get it as an ms nurse i would sit down and have a look at, at what areas are, jump out at you as being most relevant at that moment and perhaps start to have a think about you know where you might be on the the novice to expert scale on on some of the areas and where you know if you're a band six you might be novice in most things if you're a band eight you might be expert in a few more things um there are some um suggestions at the back of the competencies as to how you can evidence um, where you are and where how you can sort of think yourself about you know, benchmark yourself as to where you are on that novice to expert scale. So I think in terms of training uh, for your own personal sort of idea of what you need to train, where your gaps in knowledge might be. I think um, it's brilliant for evidence for appraisals um, for that sort of thing. I think if you're making a case to be able to go on a study day, the the competencies are. A fantastic resource for that you can you know really demonstrate to your manager look i should be here i need this knowledge to get there this study day give me that right it's it's you know very difficult then for a manager to refuse that um um and i think if you're making a case for more support or you know um more um yeah more, more support within your your either within your role or for more staff to more hours uh, of MS nursing, then again, it, it, it really helps you to build that business case. And I think for managers as well, every MS nurse should send this straight to the manager, whether their manager is a nurse or physio or somebody else. I've had um, excellent managers who were nurses, but didn't know anything about MS. And, and even then, many people don't have a nurse as a manager. Um, but I think this is a really good way of saying to your manager, this is what we do. Um, you know, this is what an MS nurse is. This is, you know, why we're fighting for it. This is why it's important. This is the difference we make to patients. Um, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Um, mm. So I, I think it's really key. And then managers should be using it as, you know, when they're recruiting, it should be, that should be what they're, they're setting the, the person specification around. That should be how they're judging recruits um, who are coming in. Um, you know, it's a really useful tool for managers that they're using it properly and helps them to engage. Yeah, and I guess, I know we mentioned already, it's difficult to align with grading, but I guess it can help inform them a little bit. I think so. I think, as Mavis said earlier, it, it's 
you know, we, we have steer clear from saying you know, this is a band six, this is a band eight, because it's not that clear cut, it's not black and white. But definitely, I think, again, it's about benchmarking. And mm. um, you know, we, we were chatting earlier about examples of nurses who've come in as a band six and then been promoted to a band eight. And, you know, you would hope that if that's the case, that they're being judged against something like the competence against the competencies so that you know that they are competent to perform to band eight. Or, or whatever the scenario is, um, and and so I think it can be again a really important part of the the um, evidence that somebody pre presents um, if they're making a, an appeal against their banding. Okay, thanks, Megan. And um, so I, I know that there are nine competencies. What areas do they cover, and kind of how long do you envisage it takes? I know that it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string, but I guess to give an MS nurse an idea of of kind of how much this will impact their workload and they should be preparing for what would you advise should i go the, the um so i think when um you're right it is a piece of string and as maybe said earlier you probably never get to the end of it you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect to ever know everything and um, so you know there will be you know i would not expect anybody really to be expert in every single competency and, and you know, each of the nine is divided into several other sort of components and aspects um, but I think if, if we're talking about uh, a brand new nurse coming into role as an MS nurse, um, certainly I would expect, or I would hope, maybe not expect these days, but I would hope they would be supernumerary for a period of ideally three months, but at least sort of six weeks to three months. And they can start to look at some of the, the key um, competencies there. They would need to sit down with their manager or whoever supporting them in that role, come up with a training programme based around the competencies. Um, and then gradually transition from being completely supernumerary to, to taking on, um, you know, being completely unsupervised. I think that that needs to be a transition period as well. So again, in an ideal world, I would say that would probably take about at least six months. It depends on on you know the MS nurses, the new MS nurses starting point, what experience they've had before. If they're coming from somewhere like ITU where they have had really no MS experience experience then they might need longer if they were perhaps a district nurse or, or something like that in the background it might need slightly less time um, and then it's just a matter of keep building on it then your, your appraisals your training program those discussions with your manager um, on a regular basis as to where your focus is next in terms of your training and developing your competence and i guess that that kind of one of the other questions i had was there are parts of the competencies say around disease modifying therapies or being part of an mdt discussion that for an MS nurse, maybe they could use that as a as a kind of discussion with their manager to say, actually, this is really important for me to learn as part of my role, even if they don't have access and and they're maybe a lone worker or they work in the community. Would you would you I mean you know it may not be relevant for other community um, staff who are who are using this to kind of inform them on the on the sort of other sort of more basic level of MS, but for an MS nurse. Would, would you say this gives them the opportunity to kind of provide that structure to have discussions with their manager? I know maybe you were talking about this earlier. Um, so I completely agree with Megan in, in terms of the time frame and, you know, MDT, not all organisation or, or service, MS service will have uh, an MDT and we all have different definitions of MDT. You know, I think the evolution of MDT in terms of MS, we think about, you know, doctors, pharmacists, you know, nurses, talk about drugs, but the MDT is a lot wider than that. You know, there are some teams, you know, working across the MDT of OTs, physios, the SALT team, and that is also an MDT. Um, so it's to use the document, the competency document, um, in whichever setting people work in um, and whatever MDT that would look like. And I think as a lone worker, it will give them that tool that actually I need to be part of an MDT. Um, and um, that could be the GP, that could be the district nurse. So it's it's wherever you work. I think the definition of an MDT is defined on where you work. Carol, do you want to comment on that too. Yeah, I agree with that because I've worked a long time quite remotely in North Devon um, on my own. <laughs> and I, I agree with Mavis and Megan that um, it doesn't have to be 
a neurologist in the MDT, with a nurse, with a pharmacist, whoever, you know, especially if you work within the community, you have your therapy colleagues. So you build, it's important for communication to build that MDT with other professionals that are um, relevant to the patient journey. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's quite key. I guess that's that's really important, Carol, that with your background and where you worked. And I know you said that you're but that kind of that contribution to the succession planning. Yes, indeed. Yes. Um, and um, that this is paid off because we do have um, a, a new band seven in post. I, I have retired and returned part time um, to help with his induction, which is great. And we've set up a, a, a um, we have a plan <laughs> um, and we've put business case together. And this has now become reality, which is great news in matters in post. Yeah, it's fantastic. And we're going to use the competencies. <laughs> fantastic. Well, that brings me on to so where where all of you, I don't know who would like to answer this. Where are you envisaging this will be available? And um I guess yeah, it's then kind of getting it out there and making sure that it's being used by all MS nurses. Well, I think the um the ultimate goal, goal is to have it worldwide, I guess, you know, it's, um, you know, there's MS nurses now everywhere in the world, it's, um, you know, in the Middle East um, as well. Um, but I think to start off with, we want our members, the UK MSNA members, to have access to it. So we have, again, um, gained funding to have the document printed out and it will be handed out um, at the MS Trust Conference and also it will be posted to all um, um, members of UK MS and so they will have a hard copy but it will be um, available electronically as well people can download it um, so it will be available um, in our website and also if um, obviously the academy is willing to host it on their website it will be available there I think the more people use it um, the more useful it will be as a tool um, and you know if I think after a a six months to a year of being in circulation or perhaps ask you know people who have used it for their feedback um on how we can actually um you know how they've used it how we can improve it but the ultimate goal is for it to be available to all um ms um nurses working in the field um of of ms not just ms nurses sorry it's it's all healthcare professionals um we have also um sent it to um iomsn um, so they're the um, Association for um, American um, MS Nurses, and um, I've forwarded as well to the Australian MS Nurses, so if, um, it's going to be a useful tool for them. So anyone who would like to have access to it, I invite them to contact um, the organisation um, and um, see if we can sort of help them out in terms of their competency documents, if they want to create one from scratch as well. Excellent. Thanks, Mavis. And I and I guess this is a crucial part of our revalidation. Um, this is something that is a, a great tool for, for use in that. Definitely. And at the back of the um the physical copy, there are some notes as well that people can write in um and sort of reflect on each competencies um that they have managed to um to fulfill, whether it's from novice to expert, and then they can work their way through as well. Yeah. Um, will there be support um, available for any MS nurses working in isolation, as we've already discussed? Is it possible for them to reach out and get any help from other MS nurses? I think that's the project that Nicola um, is, is working on. Nicola Dakin, who's the other co-chair of UK MSNA. Um, we are in the process of um, creating like a buddy network, um, so clinical supervision for new and existing MS nurses. Um, and especially if you're a lone worker, we have committee members now representing different parts of the country. Um, and, you know, all of that information is available on our website quite openly, actually. So if you um, are from, you know, Devon or from Cornwall, you can have a look who is the closest um, to you and you can contact that committee member um, for any questions. Um, and any yeah. questions, you can always email um, to the organisation as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's key. Well, oh, sorry, Carol. 
So, sorry, Ruth. I was also going to say that, um, you know, as MS nurses, we are very well organised <laughs> and we do, most of us will belong to a regional network of MS nurses. So that's a great opportunity for us as a, as a, a smaller group, if you like, to actually um, look at the competencies and see how we're going to use them, not only individually, but perhaps regionally as well. It's mm. just a wonderful opportunity to have them. That's a very good point, Pam. That's a very good point. And what would you say the future? So um, you, you have already mentioned actually a lot of the future plans for, for the uh, competency document and I guess influencing wider than just MS nursing um, and, you know, across across the world. So geographically as well, how how um, how kind of how often would you anticipate this document being updated? You mentioned about getting some feedback over the next year. Is there anything in place already for reviewing this, Mavis? I think that's, as I've mentioned earlier, the work really doesn't stop. <laughs> um, so we really need to evaluate the document. You know, this, um, I think the document is only valid and useful um, if you evaluate it. So we need to send out a, a survey, a questionnaire um, to any healthcare professional using the document. And perhaps if there are new developments in the field of MS, which there will always be inevitably, um, I would imagine the document itself will need to be revised every few years to make sure that it's in line with current practice, um, not just for nurses, but for, for everyone. And I think one thing that we have discussed offline um, within the committee um, and also with the co-chairs is how we can align and use the competencies um, to provide um, evidence for our work as MS nurses. Um, so one of the plan, um, one of the plans is to perhaps survey uh, people with MS um, around the competency document, but that is a quite a, um, a, a plan in its infancy. Yeah, yeah, you, you touch on a really important topic, isn't it? It's the value of uh, uh, value of a nurse in essence, and then the value that an MS nurse brings to the role. And I think that will be demonstrated through the competencies um, and help us to be able to articulate that really well to, to our managers. Um, just before we finish, I didn't know if there's any, is there anyone you particularly want to thank Mavis or any kind of final comments from you? Um, well, definitely, Carol and Megan, um, thank you very much for your patience and for my incessant emails um, <laughs> and um, to the core people involved and the committee members of UK MSNA um, who have all contributed to the, to the document, um, to the MS Trust, MS Society, the MS Academy, to you, Ruth, you know, thank you very much. And I think, you know, everyone's dedication to improve um, the lives of people with MS around, you know, competency document is, is, is a part of that. Um, I would like to thank Janssen as well, who have, they have provided funding for us um, in terms of medical writer and um, the printing of the document itself. Um, and, you know, I'm not quite sure if Carol and Megan would like to, to add a few more people there, um, but we're just eternally grateful for the dedication, I think, of the MS nurses who have con contributed to the document. Carol, do you have any other? Do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I I think everyone Mavis has, has thanked, but also to Mavis <laughs> for being so patient with us all as well, because I appreciate sometimes, especially during the quieter times throughout the pandemic period that things went really quiet and we were very slow in our response or, or immediately after the pandemic. Um, but also, um, you know, just our um, experience from our colleagues as well, you know, because I did talk about it with my Southwest colleagues about the competencies and, um, you know, they had some really useful ideas as well. So I think it's just everyone who has ever listened to me <laughs> talking about the competencies. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd just like to, like, thank you. I, I think I'd just like to echo both of you. And, and yes, thank you, obviously, Mavis as well. I mean, it, it's... Mm -hmm.
this has been you know years in the making for very good reason and i think it's a fantastic document and i think so many people have been involved along the way um but i think you know yourselves you, you've all held this together and, and made this happen and, you know it's going to be so useful now hopefully and i think the you know the plans to keep this an alive document to constantly review and and see how it can be improved and updated as, as the years go on i think is really key to this so just thank you to you all i think this will make a big difference to, to ms nurses and ultimately to the care of people with ms i think yeah, yeah. i should say a special yeah. thank you to um patrick as well who's our secretary um for uk msna he's been you know instrumental in basically keeping everything together <laughs> um especially during the pandemic and you know you know, chasing and also sending emails to the key um, stakeholders. So I'd like to, to say thank you to Patrick as well. Thanks, Mavis. And thank you three, Megan, Carol and Mavis. Thank you so much for joining me today. I think this is absolutely crucial and really important piece of work. And I just want to wish you every bit of luck with launching the competencies and getting this information out there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Carol. Thank you.